Well, another fine mess you've gotten us into, Brad. <clears throat> Let me uh, put this together and I will show you what I just did. One second, we're working on it. All right, this is the uh, blue handled knife I'm working on, right? It's the one I got all shined up, all buffed up, and uh, right now I'm shaping the handle. So it's looking good. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna just knock about 45 degrees off all these corners, then I'm gonna start sanding it on my uh, big sander over there, my belt grinder. And then I realized what I had done. When I put the dowel rod in there that I cut a slot in, I drilled too deep. Not much, I mean, I am right. If I had just cut this off, uh, probably a quarter of an inch further, that hole wouldn't have showed up. I cannot believe it. I'm gonna continue on with this. And uh, what I'll end up doing, is when it's all said and done, I'll fill that with epoxy, whatever shows, and smooth it out and buff it. And uh, the gentleman that originally wanted this, it's been months and months and months, so uh, he may not want this at this point, you know, because it's taken me so long to to uh, get it this far. But, uh, God, I can't believe it. I am just thoroughly disgusted with that. That was a $40 or so piece of wood that I drove all the way over there to a, another town to get. And uh, huh, I cannot believe it. Boy, sometimes, you know, it only takes one really stupid mistake like that. Uh, for the rest of your life, you remember that and you don't do it again. So, uh, my tree way up there on the corner where the cable goes through the tree to the phone pole, I think I'm going to take me a pole saw up there and cut the branches that are definitely pulling out my cable and they're definitely hanging way over my property so I have every legal right to trim the limbs that are hanging over my property. And if that old lady over there, that's the old lady that has given us all the trouble over the years. And if she sees me cutting her tree, she's gonna call the police. And uh, the police seem to show up whenever she calls. I think they're kind of getting tired of her nonsense. But uh, anyway, what do you do? You know, the electric company won't do nothing. The cable company won't trim them. So I gotta do something to have internet. So I may park this until I'm over my disbelief that I made such a, st a stupid mistake and uh, go cut them limbs up there and just be prepared for the police. Okay, I've thought about it a little more. Uh, this is not really salvageable. I mean, I may use this on another knife that I just put a satin finish, a knife that will be intended for use. I'm just going to look for another blue piece of wood like this, and uh, I'm not going to ask someone to uh, spend any money on a, a knife that has a, a clear flaw that this, uh, you know, he wanted it polished, and I have put all the work in to polish this, and uh, so this is not obviously going to be a knife he's going to be batoning wood through. I'm, and I'm just, a, I'm going on the assumption that uh, the guy still wants it. And if he doesn't, perfectly understandable. I mean, you know, who wants to sit around three, four months for a knife? So uh, if he still wants this, then I'm going to uh, buy another piece of blue wood. And I will use this on... A knife that I only bring this up to a satin finish. A knife that's intended to be used. So, I'm going to save that. And uh, 
tonight when I go home or this afternoon when I go home, I'll, I have that guy's phone number. I'm going to ask him if he's still interested in this. And if he is, I'm going to look for another blue piece of wood and uh, start over. No big deal. And I've thought about the tree up there. And I kind of think that I'm going to wait. I think she works a day or two during the week. And I'm going to wait until the weekday. Today's Sunday. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll wait till she's gone. I'll get it trimmed up, get it cleaned up. And, uh, you know, if she gets mad later and calls the police, what can they do? I've already trimmed the tree up and got it off my cable. Anyway, so in the meantime, what I'll do is work on this other knife. I got a whole bunch of uh, sanding to do on that. And I'm going to do that right now. So well, let me get started. Okay, I, uh, going from the belt grinder there to the first grit is the most important, uh, the most important part of hand sanding is the very first level after the, the belt grinder. And, uh, I'll show you the other side. I am finally got all the, the low grade, the 80 grit and the 120 grit sanded out. And you have to look at this from so many different angles and shine that light all around. And, uh, because if you don't get the scratches out at this low grit, the scratches will show up when you go to buff it. And you're, if you don't do it right on your lower grits, you're just wasting your time if you're going to try to polish it. So, there is one side up to 150. Uh, the spine is 150. Now, I'm going to start on this side. And I've been thinking about that tray up here. And, uh, I don't know when the cable guy is going to get here. But, if I can get this tree trimmed out of the cable before he gets here, and just convince him to please just run new cable from that pole to see this pole behind my uh, behind my house right there. That's where the cable. The cable goes from there over to see where the the fence is. Let me see if I can do this again. You see where the north south fence hits the east west fence, where my gate is up here. Well, just to the left of that, the east of that is the tree that's just grown grown right up into the cable and every time the wind blows it pulls the cable back and forth so i may sand till i can't sand anymore today and then just go do that she's not like typically an outdoor person and uh now that we have the fence up she doesn't sit on her back porch and study us anymore we she used to do that with her phone in her hand just waiting for a reason to call the cops and uh, so I may get to that today. Uh, and you know, I may just trim a, <laughs> a limb or two every day. So the chances of her seeing me, I don't want trouble. I don't want trouble with her. I don't want to, I don't want the police to have to come down here. I just don't want trouble in my life. So it has to be done. There's no way I can have consistent internet and cable with a cable going right through the middle of that tree. And there's no way I'm going to get the cable company to, to do something differently besides run the cable where it's at. And the bottom line is I have a legal right to trim trees that are hanging over my property line. And we've already been through this with her. When I had my home brought down the road into our property here and set up, all her trees were leaning way, way over way across our property into the middle of our driveway and we're talking three four inch limbs and i had to cut them back to get the mobile home in here and she come on glued and uh you know uh the the police got involved and same thing you know we told them why they're hanging over our property and 
Uh, we cut as little as possible to get our trailer, our double wide in here. <clears throat> and you know the law, I know the law. We have a legal right to trim them trees right up to our property line, but we didn't. So still, you know, even though we tried not to cut too much off, she got nutty. She's just been the, the, the most unpleasant human. And uh, to be honest, if I had any idea that woman was going to be so much trouble, I never would have moved here. Who wants that? Who wants that kind of drama? And when you're at the, the last quarter of your life, uh, you know, you're winding down, you've had to deal with awful people your whole life, and, uh, you know, you set your home up, and you can't get away from her. You can't get away from that type of person who wants to inflict unhappiness and drama and uh, pain into your life if they can. And uh, I've heard, you know, I've seen videos, I've seen TV shows about crazy neighbors. Well, that's one. The only difference is she's not likely to become violent against us. and But she is that type of person who looks for every opportunity they can to bring uh, unpleasant things into your life, whether it be uh, police contact or, you know, legal co legal contact. Uh, anyway, let me go back to sanding. When I get tired of sanding, I'm going to get my uh, long pole saw out. I'm going to go up there on the corner and do a little bit of trimming at a time. Okay, you probably can't see any difference, but uh, I went from 150 to 180. And now I'm fixing to start 220. It'll be this direction. And then 320 in this direction. And then 400 in this direction. And then 600 in this direction. And then I'm going to start doing my scroll work on the spine. And that way when I heat treat it and temper it, I go back with 600, clean it all up, and then I can buff it, and I haven't washed all my scroll work out with a whole bunch of sanding. Uh, I didn't do this on the first knife that I did the scroll work on, and you could tell by looking at the scroll work that the edges were a little bit washed out from, you know, six grits of sanding, so I think this is a better way. And my wife had a good idea. She said, put a piece of wood over the end. And that is a good idea. I got some desert ironwood that would look good on the end of that. And I just might do that. And if I put desert ironwood like a cap, I might put desert ironwood up here also. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. But that's not a waste yet. I'm going to cover that hole up. I mean, I almost missed it. Another quarter inch and I would have missed it. And next time, I'll remember not to drill so deep. Uh, it's really hard getting a perfectly straight half-inch hole drilled all the way down. Straight this way and straight this way. So I have a level, I have an angle bolted to, not bolted, vice gripped to my bench uh, drill press out there. My, my, my floor-mounted drill press. I can't do it on this because the travel is, this doesn't have enough travel. So I have to go up to my garage and use my very old Craftsman drill press. So I have to square it this way, I, and I vice grip it to the angle that I've got mounted to the table, and then I have to square it this way to make sure that the hole is drilled completely straight through, you know, so I'm not cattywampus. So anyway, I'm going to uh, make me a cup of coffee why didn't I? Oh, yeah, I shut the lights off so you could see. Um, uh, I'm going to make me a cup of coffee and sit here and drink it and then uh, see if I can't get this up to uh, 600 today. I don't know if I can. And uh, I'll go back to working on that probably tomorrow. Okay, I did not get my coffee. But I am starting 320. So, uh, now I am going to get my coffee. Uh, somebody uh, on my Rumble channel left a comment and a link to a YouTube video from an angry Comcast customer 
going through the the same rigmarole you have to go through when you get the uh, the foreign call center answering people. And, you know, I listened to about 20 minutes of it, and the guy, and I was going to leave a link, but I'm not. It's just, it's unnecessarily abusive to people who have no more control over Comcast than the customers do. And uh, they're in a foreign country. Granted, you know, you might be mad that uh, call center work is being sent overseas. And, you know, I get aggravated. It's very hard to understand English that's not spoken like we speak it. And then you couple that with a bad connection or a headset that is not, you know, optimal or too close to their mouth. And uh, it's very, very hard to understand people who are speaking English in an accent that you're not familiar with, number one. And number two, long distance overseas phone calls are never without their own problems. And number three, uh, you know, the, the equipment that's picking up their voice. It's got to be headsets. They're not holding a phone to their head, so it's a headset. So there's three things there that are right away aggravating. And then number two, or, or four, they can't do anything except, you know, write up a I mean, they have no more control over Comcast than you or I do trying to get some service out of these people. Comcast truly is one of the worst companies on the entire planet. And uh, even when you... I'll, I'll give you an example. We couldn't get them to hook our service up here when we moved in. So we drove all the way over to Shreveport with our guns because you can't go to Shreveport without packing serious heat. And we went to the Xfinity office and started our account there, gave them our address. And that was the easiest way for us to get some action was to actually go to the office. So they gave us all the equipment, sent us home with it, and they said an installer will be along Anywhere in the next seven days. So, in other words, for the next seven days, you have to be available to be home at a moment's notice because they won't wait at your gate for more than a, a minute or two if you're not there. So, for the next seven days, you have to not go to work or not go anywhere or shop or take your kid to school. Uh, and that's just not right. Well, anyway... We get the cable installed. Everything's going, you know, we got TV, we got internet. And about a week later, we get a box in the mail from Xfinity. And it's all the equipment that we went to Xfinity and picked up. The modem and all the other stuff and cables. And so we don't need two. And if we don't bring it back, they're going to end up charging us for two. So we didn't even open the box. We went right back to... Xfinity, Comcast, over in Shreveport, and uh, brought the unopened box in there to them so they could put it back in their inventory and get it off our account because we knew what would happen. They would start charging us for two modems and maybe even two cable services, you know? So the lady makes us open the box and take everything out. Now, this is clearly not an open box. It's the original factory tape. And, you know, even the people in the offices, honestly, are truly, truly some. <sighs> Everyone we encountered was just like the people we encounter on the phone and the foreign call centers. You can speak basic, plain, simple English, and they just don't get what you're trying to say. So you're up against... Stupid people at the office, stupid people on the phones, and it's just a losing proposition from start to finish with Comcast. So there you go. Anyway, we were able to return it and get it put back into their system where they didn't start charging us for two modems and two cable bills. We did get that much done. And then 
they charged us $100 to come out here and hook our cable up. They weren't supposed to. When you start a new service, they're not supposed to charge you. So my wife handled that. Uh, only took like three or four phone calls to get someone to refund that $100. And uh, that's kind of why we have avoided calling them to have them come out here and fix the outside cable because they're going to try to to hit us with a $100 uh, charge, you know, to come inside the house. They'll want to, they try and claim it's your indoor wiring because from their box in, you have to pay for the uh, service call, the service visit. From their box out, it's free. And we have no problem with the inside service and we didn't last time when they came and yet they still charged us the 100 bucks. Anyway, that's what you're up against with Comcast. It's just an entire company. And they may not be stupid people. They just operate with such a huge parameter of lack of understanding. It, it, the, the gamut of not understanding their own policies is just mind-blowing. And to get somebody that understands what has gone wrong and what they've charged you for, it's just... It, it You almost want to just say, screw it, keep the $100. I mean, that could be a lot of food for me. I could pay my light bill, but it is so not worth dealing with you. And I'm telling you, if uh, Elon Musk ever comes out with that satellite-based internet and all that, you better believe we're gone from Comcast. It is terrible... Uh, the channels that they stick you with are not channels any normal person would watch. So they stick this fluff. Fluff. It's, you know, 90 channels of bullshit that... There's like six channels that my wife and I ever watch. And we got the basic, the smallest package they have. And you can't opt out of the stupid crap... Uh, that you'd never in a million years ask for. So you're forced to pay for that, what you're not, you know, a package that you don't really want, but it's the cheapest package. And uh, then, oh, here's some good news. We have fiber optic. AT&T has put fiber optic close enough to our house that I think within a year, we will have the option of going to fiber optic internet, which... If we can do that, we can get all TV we want off fiber optic. So, uh, you know, our problems may be solved. And I would love to see Comcast go completely out of business. What a total monopoly they have over cable TV and Internet. It is not right. And they got to be putting big money into a lot of pockets to continue getting away with this for all those years. Ain't that right? You think I should shut up now? I do, too. All right, cup of coffee, a little more sanding, and the day is done.